Kevin, it's great to see you again. Uh, good to see you too. Yeah, last time we were talking, it was about Ethernet, so it must have been a little while ago, and the industry has certainly moved on a bit since we last had a chance to talk about uh, uh, the carrier business. Uh, it seems like there's been a shift recently from carriers looking to save money on OPEX to working out new ways to make money, to, to, to increase their revenues with new types of service or application. Do you think that's true? And how's Cisco working with those carriers? Yeah, it's, it's definitely true. And if you kind of look at the evolution of, of AI technologies, we had the, the major builds with the hyperscalers and, and the LLM builders, but now we're kind of moving into that world of, of inference and usage of the models. And so I think companies like Cisco and service providers can, can have a huge play in, in that space. So as the models move outside of the, the cloud and, and really into the enterprise data centers, service provider networks, and, and even out into the world itself, um, the solutions that we're building and the simplifications we're driving to those solutions can help them deploy much, much faster. So uh, one of the things which I'm hearing here uh, at MWC25 is that obviously AI is putting increasing uh, demands on the network. Uh, as a provider of network solutions, that's obviously uh, good for you. Do you think there's a possibility, uh, both inside the data center and between the data center, that we're going to see a sort of new optical networking boom uh, being caused by this vast volume of AI-generated data traveling over the network? Yeah, so we, we've seen a huge increase in data in the hyperscale networks that we've been building out. And so as we see more and more usage of, of the AI uh, applications and, and AI infrastructure being built, I expect to see a lot more data uh, dispersed further in the network, but also you kind of think of this futuristic world of agents and, and moving to physical AI and robots, I expect to see a lot more uh, agents and, and AI applications talking to each other. So we'll drive more um, uh, diversity in where the, the data actually is mm -hmm. and more communication between different devices. So we definitely do expect to see a, a growth from this. Let's stay on data for a moment. Uh, I mean, a lot of people are talking about distributed data and at the same time, hyperscalers and others are building these huge uh, centralized uh, data centers, uh, which approach wins out? Because the data, it seems, w would work better if it was closer to the end user. Yeah, and, and uh, I'll use my product answer and just say, I think it's going to be a combination of all of those. And so if you think about massive training workloads, those are definitely very centralized and, and being built by a small number of very, very large uh, companies. But as you start to think about uh, fine tuning and, and inference, it's really about data gravity and, and where the data resides. And so as more and more of proprietary enterprise and customer data is being used, we're going to see a lot of these AI applications pushing deeper into the network and, and a lot closer to, to where those customers reside and where that data resides. Let's uh, think about the future of the communications industry. Uh, I think that within three or five years, uh, a show like this will uh, be dominated by uh, digital industrialization, Industry 4.0. I really see these technologies, automation, predictive analytics, uh, AI, uh, moving into the industry verticals and being transformative there. Uh, do you agree with that? And how important is that to Cisco as a potential market? Yeah, and actually, it, it may not even be three to five years. If you look at the acceleration that we're seeing in this space, mm. you know, last year we talked a lot about AI, but it was really AI for the sake of AI. We didn't really know exactly what things would look like. I think this show you're seeing a very different vibe and you're seeing a lot of people looking at real world use cases and examples of how they're going to leverage these, these technologies. And so uh, in, in three to five years or, or potentially even faster, I definitely expect to see usage of AI and actually AI um, enhancing everything that we do and not just being the thing we talk about, but actually being built into everything that we do. And so uh, acceleration of, of new service offerings, getting to innovation faster, and the operational savings a lot of people are enjoying today from, from some of these AI applications is absolutely going to be part of, of that next industrial revolution. I agree with that. Um, it seems to me that the best way for a service provider to plan around AI is to assume it's going to be in every device and it's in their network, uh, to look at it as a table stakes kind of commodity, and then assume it's there and then work out how they're going to use it. I mean, that's a, that's a different way to the way we talked about AI last year, but that's very much in line with Cisco's new philosophy of AI, I think, right, Kevin? Yeah, 100%. And, and I think you know, the, the faster AI moves, the more we learn about it, mm -hmm. the more it's transforming our thought of, of where it's going to be used and how it's going to be mm -hmm. used. And you know, moving from 
generative AI and, and building the large language models to agentic AI and all the, the talk we've been having around, you know, a uh, uh, mixture of, of intelligent agents working together to solve problems, mm -hmm. to that view of physical AI. Physical AI is interesting because when we get to the world of AI being outside the data center and in mm -hmm. the physical world, robots and manufacturing floors and a lot of the industrialization that we talked about, I actually think it's a domain of companies like Cisco and, and our service providers to actually bring that to market. Uh, so it's, it's an exciting time and it's perfect for, for shows like this. Kevin, it's great to see you. Great to see you too. Always a Appreciate pleasure. This. Happy Thank to you. be here at any time. Thank you.